Hey, how's it going guys? Um, I have been talking about doing a little QY100 series for a while, so I figured I would just um, quit waiting for the perfect outline and go ahead and just uh, take, a, take a crack at it. So uh, to, to start with, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the QY100 sequencer um, and sort of how what the workflow is like when you're writing uh, in each of the respective uh, pattern and song modes. So, um, just to sort of give you a quick breakdown, I guess, let me put this aside here. So essentially it's, you can think of the machine as divided into two parts. Um, there's two main modes. One is uh, song mode and one is pattern mode. And if you're familiar with the MOXF or the, um, the motif sequencers, it's the same sort of setup. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and, and, you know, obviously the newer ones, the MOXF, the Motif, uh, are a much more full-featured and you can do a lot more stuff, but it's pretty much the same idea. Um, you have, with, with Yamaha sequencers, it's, um, uh, you can quantize to quarter note or whatever, um, you know, eighth note, whatever you want, but by default, it's sort of just a MIDI recorder, and I think, I forget how they put it, it's 480 um, frames per quarter note or something like that, but that means you can sort of play ahead or behind the beat a little bit. Um, but you go and you record, with pattern mode, uh, it's an 8 bar uh, max. With song mode, it's a, it's, you know, it's a linear recorder, just like you would uh, on a tape machine or a digital recorder or OP1 or something like that, um, except that in sort of recording the actual audio in, uh, information, it's recording the MIDI sequences. Um, but you can do, I, I, it goes pretty long. I think basically as, as <clears throat> you could do one song theoretically that filled up the entire memory and it would probably be, you know, pretty long song. Um, or you can do, depending on, of course, like how much CC information and stuff like that. And um, you know, with the QY, there's not a um, a lot you can do for well. There's no CC information that you can do other than I guess the mod wheel, which is actually a mod button. Um, but uh, but you can draw curves and stuff like that using CC. Um, and in fact, you can do some stuff that's very hard to do with hardware controllers. Um, but uh, but we'll get to that later. So uh, eight bar. Uh, per pattern, and then there's, um, I guess, six sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. So there's a sort of the, the paint by numbers suggestion is intro, main A, um, fill it from section A to section B, and then fill from section B back to section A, and an ending. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously you don't have to stick to that, but yeah, I did, I was surprised by, um, you know, when I just started embracing that pattern uh, as, as for my workflow, it actually ended up being a pretty, um, I mean, it's reductive, but it ends up making you realize how simple pop music is in general. Um, even when I'm doing instrumental stuff, I'm still kind of doing pop song, you know, where there's a, there's an intro and then there's an A section of some kind couple elements come in and out then I do a bridge and um, obviously uh, there's no <laughs> there's no vocals with the with that stuff but there's still some kind of chorus some kind of hook and then you go back to an earlier section and um, something I really like doing and something uh, probably inherited from listening to a lot of pinback is sort of going to a, a bridge or a C section um, and just letting that take you out do a fade out on a a, a new section <clears throat> but um let's see here so yeah eight bar max and you know they call them fills but technically you could make the fill just another pattern which i've also done so um you do uh up to 480 um frames per uh beat or quarter note i guess it was um and uh let's see here I don't know the exact memory specs offhand, but, um, oh, this one, that's the other main difference. This one's 16-track MIDI, and this one's 8-track MIDI. Um, what's kind of cool, though, is, uh, boy, that did not go well. Um, 
you can actually track your patterns into the song mode. So you can write eight tracks of MIDI and get, get your sections all fleshed out and then move over to song mode and from there you perform your you know six sections and as you're switching back and forth between them you can be recording that into like tracks one through eight over here then on top of that you can overdub nine through sixteen uh, in song mode so pretty pretty complete composition tool when it comes down to it okay so a lot of talking let's go ahead and do a little bit of uh, moving around in here in the actual device um, <clears throat> The 70 doesn't have an audio input. Uh, this is the QI100, so it has a single mono input and a little little gain and an amp simulator with a couple of effects. But it's um, it's an older style amp simulator, so it's not uh, sort of up to the standards of some of our modern DSP stuff. Um, let me see if I can get this a little closer. Still want to try to get the buttons in here, but um, as you can see, it's also an uh, old school LCD screen, which I really like uh, for nostalgia's sake, but unfortunately, it's not backlit, and I can't find any good walkthroughs for how to install um, an LED or backlight uh, backlit screen without um, potentially damaging the unit. So I'm just going to go ahead and use lighting. Um, Okay, so let's start with song mode. <clears throat> so you've got uh, here is the number of song you're working on. Let me see if I can get something better to point with. Um, and then you can name your song. Uh, this one is a, a set that I actually use for the Metaphysical Club, which is a sort of improvisational group. But um, basically, I didn't uh, use any of the writing like not recording any notes. I just set up 16 channels and down here you can see your 16 channels. Well, 1 through 8 here and then uh, 9 through 16 here if you keep using the arrow to go over there. But um, you can't save presets but what you can do is save you know songs into a... Uh, I'm sorry, you can save a song with all of the presets loaded into it and then just not write any material on it. So um, I'm not sure what's in here right now. Oh yeah. So this one I've got that there in the in channel one. <laughs> and then something a little more um, percussive. And I usually set the pitch bend to do octaves. So you can do kind of cool little sparkly effects. Let's see what else we got here. Drums, piano. There's a little handbell or probably gamelan. Um, okay, so the way I set that up is I went to song mode and you use your little cursor if you can't tell <clears throat> I'm using these directional arrows to move my cursor around the screen and uh, it seems cumbersome at first and it kind of is but um, it gets pretty you get pretty quick with it there's also um, little shortcuts you can do in different modes by holding the shift key and pushing up and down it doesn't have much effect here uh, in song mode, but in pattern mode, you can do some cool fast switching. So, um, okay, I'm not going to talk about the transposition stuff, but you can, um, which is something that I think the only other device I can think of that is portable that can do this is going to be the OPZ whenever it comes out. But um, basically, you can set it up to transpose your patterns um, as you set, you can see on the keys there are sort of different markings for um, chord shapes and chord types so you can you can actually move through chord progressions using the same pattern um, or presumably within your song too but um, there's basically uh, for for song mode there's eight tracks uh, per screen and then you can kind of scroll 
So you could either do it that way or you can hold shift and go left and jump from, uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, there you can kind of see. So I can jump from 1 to 8 to 9 through 16 by holding down the shift key. Um, so you just hold down shift and then push the cursors. Um, but let me turn that down. You put your cursor on the track and then you can use the increment and decrement yes no buttons to go through uh, and mute or uh, solo the different tracks, arm them or, or what have you. Um, then, let me see here, to go through some of your other screens because um, there are a couple of different screens that you're going to use in both song and pattern mode. For song mode, let me see here, it is going to be, if you hit song again, you'll go to the mixer screen, then you hit song again, you go to um, sort of your effects chain, and then you hit it one more time, and you're back here. So this is sort of the transport, like controls for uh, when you want to do um, change it from overdub replacement to step uh, sequence recording, that kind of stuff. Um, you can hit song again, and from the mixer screen is, I guess, I think might be the only, but yeah, I think that is the only way to change sounds. Um, you go put your cursor on the, the little block just above the strip there where it'll say something like LD or BR um, for brass, I, mean, I think. Yeah, it's a synth brass sound. Um, and there's pretty limited uh, sound sculpting options, but if you, <clears throat> from this screen, um, hit menu and voice edit, let me do that slower, but uh, so basically from the main song area you hit song, go to the mixer screen, highlight one of the uh, channels, um, anywhere in this column will we'll do it. And then when you hit menu, there's two options. One is the effect send, um, and you can go here and control how much of each track is being sent to the effects, uh, or you can, and you can hit song to go back to your mixer menu, or you can hit menu and go to voice edit. And there's pretty limited uh, sound options. It's pretty much just filter, cutoff, and um, and amplitude envelope, and then of course pitch bend amount. So you can let's see here. Yeah, you can access actually any of the tracks. Um, here again, there's uh, several columns laid out across there for each track. But instead of being numbered, now they have sort of the shorthand for the what the um, section of the instrument is. And so you can use the increment and decrement buttons to go through sounds. And um, so that's sort of moving through the sounds one at a time. But you can also hold down shift and it'll go through categories. So there's pads, there's leads, there's piccolo? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, I guess, uh, wow, that's interesting. PI, uh, woodwinds. And then uh, reeds, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, reeds, RD for reeds. That's pretty good. Uh, hold down shift and go to, I guess that's ensemble. And yeah, so you go through, find a sound you like. One that I actually really think is fun is the, this guitar has a velocity harmonics mode, but um, since this keyboard is not velocity sensitive, you actually control that from the main song menu that we were at when we started, and you can <clears throat> change the velocity to just set it to full. Basically the velocity goes from zero to full, um, 
And then there's random one, which doesn't have very much randomness. And as you increase from R1 to R4, it increases the amount of randomness uh, and variation in velocity that you'll get, um, which is kind of an interesting way to get some form of um, dynamics out of a keyboard. Um, so at full volume, though, this one is just doing the harmonics, which I really like. So I usually go, I set this one up, and then I go to song, or to the mixer mode by hitting song, and then I go to voice edit and open up the release so that it rings out. It ends up being one of my favorite sounds. Um, so, with, with the song mode, I don't know if I have anything written here. Apparently I do. Huh. So uh, I've got a drum beat there. Let's see. Oh, that's right. So another thing you can do is actually go and edit the MIDI list with uh, Yamaha sequencers and one thing I did with this is insert a uh, polyphony on uh, note there is no um, I'm sorry not polyphony uh, mono mono mode and uh, porta uh, what do you call that portamento there we go uh, there's no portamento button on this interface um, you can get to it by entering a MIDI note though uh, in pattern mode, I don't know of a way to do that, so I'm not sure uh, if anyone's figured out that, that would be cool. But um, I presume you can probably still send it those messages from a bigger keyboard um, or another controller. But uh, basically, that means uh, right now I have it set up so that there's no actual song information recorded in that track. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and overdub a... Uh, like a bass part or something. Now I'm not going to do replace because I want to keep that portamento stuff. So uh, go back to the top. <laughs> Pretty farty. So something like that. Um, and now if I hit uh, stop and or to the top of the measure, you'll see me hitting this a lot. I'll do, I've got this kind of like nervous tick or uh, built-in memory that every time I finish I hit stop a couple times and then back. You really only need to hit stop once and then back to get to the top of the measure. But, um, you know, you pick up these little habits. So... <laughs> That farty bass is pretty loud, so what I'm going to do is go hit song again, go to my mixer, and bring that down. I'm not sure why the... Oh, um, that's why. The, uh, the port portamento is not on because I accidentally switched tracks. So maybe let's do a lead now. That's pretty loud, too. Okay, yeah, I turned that up last time because I got real excited, just like this time. Oh, another thing to watch out for is when you're writing, um, a lot of times it's easy to accidentally hit pattern mode. Uh, if you're in song mode and accidentally hit song mode, if you're in pattern mode, that sort of shifts you from one block to another, um, completely different mode, um, which we'll get to in a second. But uh, since the QI saves every single change as you go, it's not that big a deal. But um, just be aware that you are now, when you hit pattern, you go into a different mode. So um, so notice when I switched and switched back, it went back to uh, polyphonic mode. And if I hit stop and play from the top, 
it sent it that the internal sequence or the internal sound engine uh, that portamento switch sound so we should have we have our portamento okay so let's record a lead real quick hit record So I have a bunch of stuff on this, and apparently my mem the memory is full on this guy. Uh, you saw the little unhappy face there. So um, let me go ahead and show you one other thing. I'm going to... Uh... <laughs> All right, I hear you. Um... Oh, man, how can I do that job? Oh, I think I can erase. Uh... So I'm going to erase all events on track 3 from 1 to 999, um, I guess. Now, I'm going to lose my portamento if I do that, but we'll go ahead and do it, whatever. So, back to there. Let me show you the other way to record sequences. Um, so I'm going to hit record to arm it, and use the arrows to go over to step, hit enter to select that. Um, and now I'm, it's sort of set that mem that um, preference to every any time I hit record, it's going to assume I want to go into step mode. So if I hit record, then I have to hit play. And instead of counting me in, it takes me to this other edit screen. So, you know, this is a problem a lot of people have with the QY100 is here we have yet another screen to learn. But um, it's one of those things where if you put the time in, it really is, it pays off. So... Excuse me. So, so here we have the velocity and gate controls. Here we have the length of the step. So quarter inch, uh, <laughs> quarter uh, quarter note. I guess that's sixteenth now. And then uh, quarter note, half note, whole note, whole note, half note, quarter note. Um, and you can do triplets. You can see the little three there. And I think you can go up to thirty second. So now I can go down to my little um, music, uh, what do you call that, staff line, well, not really staff line, but this is my sequence area. This is my note information. And instead of a list of uh, MIDI notes like you'll get uh, if you hit menu and edit, this is, uh, each one of those dashes is a step in this sequence. Uh, it looks like it's broken up into eighth notes. Um, <clears throat> and so, if I enter in stuff, you can see those notes or those dots appearing. And that's going to sound like garbage, probably. But uh, let me do a run from real low. And then maybe we'll come back down uh, doing triplets. and maybe slow down even more doing the triplets. So now if I hit stop and go to the top of the measure. So pretty cool. Um, I, I really actually like step sequencing uh, in this, the Yamaha sequencers. It takes a little getting used to, but you can do some really interesting stuff that I wouldn't probably think to do in a traditional 16-step sequencer. Um, so this is the more, if you just hit menu and hit edit, you'll just get a straight list of the notes. And you can advance through them. And here I can, you can see sort of the gate is all set to 54 on those and the velocity is all at full. Um, and then these are the actual, uh, the pl number of, of like where in the measure that note hits and then what uh, what the actual note is and you get familiar with these relatively quickly like 240 and 120 are even divisions of 480 and 480 is sort of the the smallest it's the atom it's the smallest um, sort of uh, division actually I guess the atom isn't the smallest division anyways uh, <laughs> Um, but you can do um, 
you can do you can ed edit your uh, recordings even if you didn't do it in step mode uh, either using that edit screen I was just looking for or looking at or you can go into uh, step sequence mode so that's kind of the song uh, setup you can either like th this is all on one and then over on two I've got a whole new setup and with this one uh, I did the other method of recording which is I overdubbed a pattern that I had written in, in pattern mode, pattern 4, uh, named Walnut after my dog, um, is what I basically just went and performed it and moved through intro to main A to main B and it recorded that and now I can um, overdub on top of that, let me see. this into yeah that's fine probably gonna run out of memory if I do this but oh I am in step mode so apparently that setting is global because <laughs> from song uh, but we'll go to overdub and hit stop okay okay so So, terrible overdub, but you get the point. Um, so you can write a whole uh, set of, of parts in the pattern mode and then come overdub it here in song mode. Um, probably should have started with pattern mode, but uh, here we go. Okay, so next I'll talk about pattern mode. <laughs> 